When estimating the materials for the walls, sometimes we run into a wall that is sloped on top, which is also known as a rake wall. Looking at the elevations page on this two-story project, we can see that some of the exterior walls on the second floor will be rake walls. Let's look at the upper floor plan. Notice here that the plan is calling out the entire ceiling is pitched, so all the walls that run left and right will be rake walls. Now, calling out rake walls is very similar to calling out a typical flat wall. Just like any other wall assembly, we'll start by grabbing the segment tool and tracing out the lineal footage for one of these walls. Then, we'll set the application to be wall assembly and the product, in this case, to be 6 inch exterior sheathed. Now all that's left to do is specify the wall height settings, but first we should jump back to the elevations page so we can figure out the dimensions of this wall. This here is the wall that we're trying to call out. We see that the left side of the wall will start out with no initial height and will pitch to the right with a 10 pitch. Similarly, the right side of the wall will also start out with no initial height and will pitch to the left with a 10 pitch as well. Now we know more about the dimensions and the shape of this wall, so let's go back into the wall heights of the wall assembly that we just measured. The wall style will be double slope rake because the wall is pitched on both sides. We know the left height is zero, the left pitch is 10, the right height is zero, and the right pitch is 10. We'll press OK, and now we have set up a double slope rake wall. If we go to the material list and expand this wall assembly, we can see that the stud lengths are varying and the top plate's length has increased in order to accommodate for the slope. And if we wanted to get a visual of this wall assembly, we can click on the wall assembly line item to select it, then select the view wall tool in the toolbar and we will see a visual of our wall assembly. We can also adjust these settings at the top and get real time updates, but we don't need to make any changes to our wall assembly, so I'll put back the original settings. Let's jump back to the plan tab. We see that we still have many more walls to call out. Let's look at this wall at the top of the page. This will have the same shape and settings as the wall that we just called out. But it's important to know that when drawing multiple rake wall assemblies, we must not use the draw more like this tool. I'll explain why later, but for now, just know that one of the correct ways to measure this wall is to start fresh with the segment tool. So I'll grab the segment tool and trace out the lineal footage of this wall. Then I'll set the application, the product, and pack. Then we go into wall heights and set the heights and the pitches to be the same as the original wall. The style is double slope rake. The left height is zero, left pitch is 10, right height is zero, and right pitch is 10. We'll press OK, and now we have two double slope rake walls set up. And notice that the wall assemblies are kept separate from each other in both the takeoff items list and in the material list. This brings us back to not using the draw more like this tool. The rule for measuring rake walls is that different rake walls must be kept separate in the lists like we see here. Let's delete the wall assembly that we just measured and try to remeasure it using the draw more like this tool. We'll right click on this wall assembly, choose draw more like this, and remeasure the above wall. And notice that now we just have one line in the list to represent both wall assemblies. We'll start to see errors with this when we go into the material list and view this wall assembly. Instead of getting two separate wall assemblies, the program thinks that we just have one large wall, and now we're getting way too much extra material and these studs are way too long. This is why you must be careful to not use tools such as draw more like this or move selection here. There are some other tools that can lead to the same consequences. So a general rule of thumb is to check the quantity column in your takeoff items list for your rake wall assemblies. The quantity column will show you how many segments make up the takeoff item. And in the case of rake walls, the quantity should, for the most part, always be one. So now you know the basics of calling out rake walls and what to avoid. Be sure to check out the next part in our rake wall series where we'll dive deeper into rake walls and discuss more efficient ways to call them out.